Hey everybody, hope you're all well. Um, just going to be another little sort of a mess around video really. I got a little while ago I made one of these which is a Ray Carlson EEPROM PLA adapter and it's a bit how you go and it's just got resistors and caps on all the data lines and then I thought well I saw mine for a retro made a board which was without the resistors and caps and I thought well maybe I could make a board so I've been messing around with KeyCAD and what I'm planning to do is to make this board which will be a replacement for this kind of how you're going arrangement here. So you can see here that I've printed out the um, design on some, uh, this is like press and peel, it's kind of paper that you use to iron onto the board. So the idea is that I stick that to the board, and do it that way and cut it a bit better and then iron it on and then uh, acid etch it. And what I'll be left with is whatever's black here as traces. So this is the design for the board that I've made. Uh, and basically you've got two dip sockets, I didn't really know what I was doing, so you've got a dip socket here and then the EEPROM which will go in these two, so uh, a lot of them are just common across but then on some of them you've got resistors between the data lines and then you've got these capacitors between the data lines and ground, so pretty simple affair um, in terms of a board but I'm just going to acid etch it so it won't be that pretty. What I'm going to do now is tape, to cut and tape these down onto this, uh, somehow fix them and then iron them on. One thing I've got to do here is get all grease off this, a fairy washing up liquid. I'm not going to use sandpaper because these are very fine traces. I'm going to rough it up with this uh, scouring pad and then clean it off with isopropyl alcohol. So I can't do this live but I'm just trying to show you I'm folding the paper down and round it, squaring it and then taping it. So I don't know if you can see that, but through there you might be able to just see the faint outline of the board. This is pretty hit and miss. So I just got it on a bit of block of wood. I've got the iron going to, a, I think it's a wall setting. I know nothing about ironing, but I've set it to about three quarters, no steam. It's a thousand pardons. I couldn't get that on camera, but uh, let's peel it off and see what it looks like. Okay, so not too shabby. There's our PC board. That's the EEPROM adapter. It's actually not that sad. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. That's the uh, board now. I don't know well that's going to come out on this uh, um, light here. But what I've had to do is go across it where some of the bits are missing with a pen because it's so thick, then scratch it off with a scratchy thing. Metal straight edge, scored it loads of times until it broke. Okay, this is the nasty bit. Ferric chloride, which is uh, horrible stuff. Tupperware box, gloves and goggles. I'm going to put these boards in here and just layer some ferric oxide over the top of it and then rock it back and forward and keep an eye on it. Okay, so there's the boards in the ferric chloride and uh, I'm not sure how strong this stuff is but I'm just going to rock it forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Okay, so I'm just going to try and show you this process a little bit closer. You see how it's eating the board there. It's nearly done that one. So there's our PCBs. Uh, that's the EEPROM and that's SID to SID. Just done a quick squiz over them just to make sure that they don't look silly and now I'm just going to use some acetone to clean off the ink. So off camera I'm just going to go across each trace and buzz them out with the uh, continuity and then drill the holes out. So I've shoved the uh, top of the thing to the top there and then what I'll do is I'll arrow dye that when I'm happy with it once I've soldered that side, so when I'm pulling it in and out, it's not only relying on that thin layer of copper, it's relying on the arrow diet. These pins are quite thick, not the best thing. And I'm just gonna put some SMD caps. These are 150 picofarads. Some SMD resistors, 180 ohms. And they're gonna go uh, cap, 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 cap. Resistor, 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 resistor. Back in a minute. Okay, so there's the first initial go at it. There's the uh, surface mount resistors on, seven of them on the uh, data lines. 180 uh, SMD resistors and 150 picofarad caps. There is our PLA adapter. That's that side. On this side, I've put my own silk screen on. Idea by Ray Carlson because I'm not going to pretend it was mine. And this particular revision will only work with uh, 250407 and earlier boards. And the reason for that, see that I've written on there pin 18. On later boards like 250425, that's already filtered. So you would just do away with that resistor and that cap and then go straight across. So there's the EEPROM in the uh, adapter board. Let's uh, stick it in the test bench, see if it works. The test is going to be as follows I've got two tests. One I showed you before, I've made it into a cartridge, which is a um, glitch tester, which I got off of uh, Mindflare Retro's Video S Labian T2. 
talk. And all that does is if this you reset it once, if the light comes on, it's glitching. The other one is a Super Zaxxon, but I've made it even more pernickety because this had a 74 LS74 and I've replaced it with a 74 HC74, which apparently makes it more sensitive to glitch. So that will be the test. Okay, so first up, I guess we'll run Super Zaxxon. Joystick or keyboard? Joystick, one player. You can see that that appears to be working okay. I mean, I'm not going to tear the arse out of it, but it doesn't appear to be any glitches there. So it shows no glitches on the PLA, on the Super Zaxxon test. Let's see the uh, glitch tester. I'm going to run a mem test. If this light comes on, then we know we've got a glitchy PLA. Testing the memory, testing the colour RAM, passed. And run it one more time. Testing the memory, testing the colour RAM. One more time. Testing the memory. You can't see any of this, but testing the colour RAM. Again, definitely no light on there. Normal. I'm going to call that a pass for this uh, adapter. So the next question is, does it work with fast loader? So I've got final cartridge free in. I'm going to hold down run stop, turn it on. I'm select an indie game because I don't want copyright strikes from uh, C rappers on telly in the other room next door. Let's just uh, Neutron. That should go. Okay. So Neutron is loading. And it's going to pull you out of this without resetting the camera somehow. And it works. So that's all good. Okay, so that's the PLA adapter. Thanks to Ray Carlson. You can see I've aerodyted the top there and. Uh, Reinforced it about, um, and I <laughs> placed it at the bottom. Thing with these boards, you've got to be careful when you put them on, you're not shorting anything out, which I'll come on to here. This was the Sid to Sid board that I was uh, making as well. I still haven't got it going. This Sid is completely dead. Uh, the idea was to get this Sid to make this Nano Swin Sid work a little bit better or get the filters going. Now it kind of works but it kind of doesn't. So I'm not quite sure. This may figure in another video. Um, I've done the Gadget UK things. I'm not sure I've done them right. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I will link all of the uh, keycad files. Um, I'll try and link a kind of thing that you can print out on an A4 sheet and just etch it if you want. Um, but I hope you're all well. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye.